Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew coming to you from the beautiful Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be why the narcissist treats strangers better than you. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So why does the narcissist many times treat complete strangers better than you? This is the age old question and I will dig into it right now. First of all, you, the person that was in the relationship with the narcissist, the narcissist has already had you captured where they wanted you. In other words, you're probably in the devaluation stage or you were already married to them or loaned them money or relocated or had children with them or went into business, whatever you did, they already knew they had you. So when you were trapped or ensnared in that web of manipulation, what happened is they said, okay, I already have this person. I need to add on to my con collection of individuals. And strangers, think about it. what is a stranger? Stranger is an individual that you do not know. Every time you meet a stranger, it's an opportunity to, have, to make a first impression. What does the narcissist usually do? They make very good first impressions. Play that again. Now, a stranger to the narcissist is an opportunity. This is an individual who could turn out to be your replacement. They could become the new supply. They are a person that the narcissist many times wants to learn about. Complete strangers, people in, on airplanes, people on vacations, neighbors, people in communities or organizations you were and or are a part of, people you meet at barbecues, people you meet in the workplace. All of these people I'm talking about are all opportunities for the narcissist. Now remember, the narcissist many times they wear a mask. They want to manipulate individuals and complete strangers are the people they look for the most. Having said all these things, at one time, you most likely were a stranger to the narcissist, and then you met them somewhere. Maybe you met them at an event or a barbecue or something. And what happened? Well, the narcissist probably batted their eyelashes at you. They looked at you and they saw you as an opportunity. They looked and did their homework all about you. They did their reconnaissance on you. They figured out your social circle, how much money you made, where you lived in the past, if you were married, if you had kids, if you wanted to have kids, what your hobbies were. They learned everything about you and then they got close to you. Then they struck up a friendship or maybe a romantic relationship or maybe a business partnership, who knows. Next thing you know, the narcissist is really close to you. And what were they doing there? That's when they were having their game face. That's when they were wearing the mask the, the most because what they were doing is they were trying to get as close to you as possible and they were acting like they were similar to you. They were acting like they had your best interest at heart. They were acting like they wanted the best for you. And they were acting as if you weren't a complete stranger, as if you were perhaps the love of their life or the yin to their yang or their soulmate or the perfect business partner or the best friend of all time. How about this one? Are you my bestie? You're, we're besties, yes we are, think about that. That's what the narcissist will say many times or they will say that you are my soulmate or the love of my life, like I mentioned. All of these things are to get you ensnared in the narcissistic relationship. It's to have you believe that you've just found one of the best people on the planet and you are scratching your head thinking to yourself, how could this person be single? What's going on if it was a romantic relationship? Well, I will tell you how they can become single or how they were single. First of all, when you met the narcissist, the odds of them being single were slim to zero because they were already in relationships. You probably just didn't know about it. That's number one. But number two, if they weren't married and you counted that as being single, think about their past relationships. Were they married in the past? Were they married more than once? Who knows? But the narcissist is always looking for new opportunities and looking to looking at strangers as opportunities. That's exactly what they want to do. So let's say again, you're on an airplane. Okay, well, you're sitting next to somebody and the, or the narcissist is sitting next to somebody and they strike up a conversation with that person. Well, that person finds out, uh, the narcissist finds out quickly that that person has financial resources or has a beach house in Tahiti or they own a business, whatever. Well, what's gonna happen there? I will tell you what will happen. The narcissist will find any way under the sun to get that person's contact information and they will let some time go by and strike up a relationship with them if possible. Maybe it's through texting, maybe it's through social media, maybe it's in person, I don't know. But they will try and get close to that person and that person will become a new target. Not necessarily the new target, a new target. And this is what the narcissist does all over the globe. They treat complete strangers better than you. 
And why I share that, and I will really jump in now, is when you're in the narcissistic relationship, remember, you are being gaslit, you're being stonewalled, you're given the silent treatment, you are enduring the smear campaign, you are experiencing rage fits, you are getting less than zero from the narcissist in the relationship. You're getting nothing and you're giving everything. You're giving 110%. That's why your health takes a hit, your status takes a hit, your finances take a hit, your social circle takes a hit. Everything about you is getting decimated left, right, and center. All your resources are becoming depleted and the narcissist saw this. So what did they do? They kept on pushing the gas pedal down on the relationship with you and kept on hammering you more and more and more so you would give more and more and more. But eventually, each and every one of us, our tank gets so low that there's nothing left to give. That's when the narcissist gets whom? A complete stranger. A person that you never even knew existed to take your place. That's the new supply many times and the cycle goes on and on and on. But let's take some other real life examples. When you were with the narcissist, many times you would be in the store, maybe you were shopping and you were looking for certain items and you would see the narcissist flirting with a complete stranger. You're like, what's going on here? Like, we've been married for X number of years. Well, the narcissist saw something in that person. Maybe the person was rubbing up to them. Maybe they bumped into them and were trying to get the right peanut butter or whatever. And then the narcissist saw this. Ooh, this is a new person. And they look like somebody I could take from. So what did they do? They struck up a conversation. Next thing you know, you're triangulated there in aisle four and you're scratching your head like, what is going on? I feel like a complete stranger here. Well, the truth of the matter in that example is you are the stranger, but you're also the unpaid helper. You're also the person tethered to the narcissist and what your job there is to pay for the groceries, to tolerate the triangulation, which you didn't even know that that, that existed, and to watch that individual flirt with another individual, a complete stranger. So what happens there? This is what happens on and on and on in these narcissistic relationships. People, complete strangers, are treated better than you. Think about donating money or donating to a cause. How many times did the narcissist do that? They did it many times, why? To make it appear like they actually care about the charity that they donated to. Now, did they donate? Maybe. Did they donate and post it all over social media? Probably. What did that do? That gave them attention, it gave them supply, and it brought people into their web of manipulation on social media, looking at them saying, wow, that person, is, they're so generous with their money or their time or their resources. That's such a great person. Well, what they don't know is under the hood, that's a toxic narcissistic individual who is just making it appear as if they are doing the right thing on the planet. Well, did they do the right thing? Yeah, they did probably by donating their time or money or effort, but did they do it for the right reasons? Absolutely not. They, do it to, they did it for accolades, for promotional purposes, to get supply, to get people to pat them on the back and say, hey, good job. I wish I could contribute the way you did. All these things I'm sharing with you is how the narcissist gets new people, gets new, new supply sources to fall into place. And all of these sources are being groomed each and every day on the planet. New sources are being groomed because why? Because everybody to the narcissist was new at one point. Not everybody was the flavor of the month because not everybody makes the grade in the toxic narcissistic relationship. And if you have not been in a narcissistic relationship, consider it a great thing. You don't wanna be in one. You wanna be with a healthy or stable individual. But the narcissist completes, uh, talks to strangers or treats them better than you because number one, the narcissist knew they already had you. Number two, they were already extracting your resources from you. Number three, they need your replacement. Number four, a stranger makes give, gives the narcissist an opportunity to appear holier than now, if you will, holier than thou. Meaning the, the stranger is saying to themselves, wow, that person's amazing. What an unbelievable individual. And they spend time with me and they talk to me and oh my gosh, and they gave me their number. This is great. What that person, i.e. the stranger doesn't know, is that they are probably going to be one of the next targets if they make the grade and if they pass the toxic narcissistic snuff test, if you get my point. But the, the way the narcissist treats strangers better than you, it's virtually every single day of your life. Think about this, you would come home and you would be opening the front door not, not knowing who would be there, Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde, and then you would have good news to tell the narcissist. And what would happen? Well, they would do something like this, like, just a minute, just wait a minute, I'm busy, or I'm boiling an egg, or hang on a second, I have to re-tie the uh, shoestrings in my shoes. I'll, I'll get to you when I can, or can we talk about it later? They'll say things like that, and then the next thing you know, they will get a text or a phone call. From whom? 
from a complete stranger, somebody you don't know. And all of a sudden, they turn the water off because they don't want to boil the egg any longer. They don't uh, lace their shoes any longer because they don't need to. And they're on the phone with this person, someone you don't even know, for 10, 20, 30 minutes. And they're laughing and chuckling it up and everything's going great. And you're put on hold and you're scratching your head saying, what's going on? I, I don't get this. I'm just, I'm trying to talk to you for a few minutes and explain something great that happened in the office today. And you're talking to someone I don't even know? Like, and who is this person? Phone hangs up and you ask the narcissist. Again, you didn't know they were a narcissist, but you ask them who that was. And you're like, they say to you, oh, it's just somebody I met today and uh, they needed help with something. So I'm gonna help them. And you're like, wait, you have time for a complete stranger. 30 minutes on a phone call, laughing it up as acting as if you're having the best time of your life and you can't even talk to me, your spouse. Are you for real? But this is what happens. And this is how the narcissist again triangulates you. It's how they test you. It's how they see how much of the toxicity you will tolerate. It's how they see and place you in a position where you can't turn left, right, or center because no matter what you do, the narcissist will come at you a different way. So using that phone call example, if you said, hey, uh, I don't appreciate that, that's not good. What would the narcissist say to you probably? They'd say, well, you're such a baby. Like, what's the big deal? I'm just trying to do the right thing. I'm helping out. Or you're so jealous. Like, Or get over yourself. Or you're lucky to be with me. You're so fortunate to be in this relationship. Do you know how many other people would like to be with me? Or I can give my time however I want to. And I don't need to give it to you. They will say things like that to you. And then you're on the defense. And you're saying, uh, who does that? Uh, what kind of behavior is that? I don't get it. It's irrational, it's irresponsible, it's childish. What it really is, is it's manipulating. It's placing you in a position where you can't win no matter what you do. So the next time you come home and you have good news, you try and share it with the narcissist, you're not gonna be as excited, will you? No, you won't, and the narcissist wants you there. They don't want you all happy and full of jubilation and excitement. They want you where they want you when they want you there. Understand the message. So why the narcissist complete, uh, treats strangers completely different and better than you? It's because they can do it. It's because they want to do it. It's because the whole idea of the narcissistic relationship is the exterior of the relationship, which means what people see on the outside, that is meant to be the best image on the planet of the relationship most times. It's meant to appear like they have a stable or healthy relationship with an individual. But behind closed doors, that individual which was you or perhaps even is you right now, you're enduring all the toxicity, you're getting all the abuse, and you don't know what's going on and you're trapped in your own house many times. And then the narcissist, whenever you would have a conversation, which would never be an adult conversation, by the way, it would probably be led up to a rage fit or some blame shifting or playing the victim, whatever the, these uh, conversations would be with the narcissist, but they do deteriorate over time then maybe you push the narcissist buttons once and you stood up for yourself and put a boundary in place. What does the narcissist do? They grab their car keys, they disappear. You text them, hey, what's going on? Where are you? When are you coming home? They're getting supply from that, but now they're not responding to you. Now it's been a few hours. You don't know where they are. Maybe you're even getting worried. What happens? The narcissist is getting supply again. But the whole key here is what? Number one, the narcissist is not communicating with you because they don't want to because they know that you're right. But number two, they went most likely to another source of supplies house or location, or they're communicating with another source of supply, maybe even a complete stranger. Get the message. This is why the narcissist is crawling all over dating apps and social media, because they're each and every individual that they swipe left, right, or up or down with, these people are either a candidate to become the next new source of supply or a source of supply, or they are not. And it all depends on how the narcissist plays the game on the internet. Meaning, they look at individuals' lives and relationships as just that, an opportunity or a game, something to take advantage of, and that's what they do. They don't look at people as beautiful, beautiful, bright, shining lights like I look at you. But the narcissist knows exactly what they're doing, number one. Number two, they bank on complete strangers to give them supply. Number three, they will invalidate you at a barbecue, during a holiday, during a ceremony, every chance they can. Because number one, they can do it. Number two, you don't probably back then didn't know what narcissism was. But number three, they're looking for your replacement right underneath your nose. That's why complete strangers become the new supply so many times. Because the, the stranger doesn't know what they're up against, i.e. the toxic narcissistic relationship. And again, that was you. Remember, when you met the narcissist, you didn't have the wisdom. You didn't have the education. The narcissist did not walk up to you and give you a two-page report and say, here, read this figure out what I'm gonna to do to you, and if you wanna enter the relationship, let's go for it. If you don't want to, well, then rip up the sheet of paper and uh, move on and try and find a healthier, stable individual. But that's not what happened. 
the narcissist, when they met you, they looked at you as an opportunity. They looked at you as a stranger. They looked at you as a new shiny object, somebody that they could take from. And that's exactly what happened. And that's what's happening right now. So guys, I hope you liked the video. I loved doing it from the beautiful Carolinas. This is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great afternoon, evening, or morning. No matter where you are on the planet, you are not alone. Remember that. I love you all. God bless you. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a great day, you guys. Bye, you guys.